Imagine a utopia where everyone drives, internal, everyone drives electric vehicles instead of internal combustion engines, like in our current society. It'd be perfect, right? Everyone is happy, there's no more climate change. But for me personally, I'd find it a dystopia, a soundless, boring dystopia. After all, the, why wouldn't you believe that this is the solution to climate change? That's what the media have told you. Electric vehicles are the solution, internal combustion engines are not. So let's have a look at internal combustion engines, otherwise known as ICEs. They've always been seen in a bad light compared to electric vehicles, otherwise known as EVs, who've always been seen as the savior for our society. But there's always been this stigma against in internal combustion engines, and I'm willing to bet that most of you in this room haven't actually done the research. You've just seen news articles, seen it on social media, and just believed, you know what, EVs are the solution to our problem. And this is what I want to talk about in depth. Is lithium-ion battery-powered electric vehicles really the solution? I'll be answering this question by looking at it from three different factors. Sustainability, economics, and social factors. Let's start with sustainability. After all, it is a major factor that we have to consider in our current age, as climate change is becoming progressively a bigger problem. So, first of all, we have to get it out the way that electric vehicles do not emit carbon, compared to ICEs, which do. Actually, 4.6 metric tons of CO2 get released by a singular car a year, on average which, if we look at the total carbon emissions from uh, the transportation industry, relates to about 50%, and then the worldwide CO2 emissions, uh, transportation is 20% of the global CO2 emissions, therefore 10% comes from cars. Obviously, a big issue. So, a point for EVs. But that's not the only factor we have to consider under sustainability. What about the production of an ICE engine compared to a lithium-ion battery? In the creation of an ICE, 5.6 metric tons of carbon gets emitted, compared to a lithium-ion battery, where 16 metric tons of carbon get emitted. So you'd have to drive your EV for at least two or more years for it to be net carbon neutral with an ICE. So I would give that point to ICEs. We also have to consider the fact that oil is also seen as a bad uh, resource. It gets leaked, it hurts the environment around. Very similar to actually the production of lithium-ion batteries. So, in terms of this, it's a tie. Let's also now think about uh, sustainability in the long term. ICEs can always be fixed. You can go to your local mechanic and get your every part changed out and fixed without having to replace the whole engine. Whereas lithium-ion batteries actually cannot be fixed. Nothing can be reused within them, and they get just thrown in the landmine once they break. Therefore, another point for ICEs. Let's also think about what powers them. ICEs get powered by petrol, obviously, a known resource that also has negative connotations towards the environment. These, uh, the petrol gets delivered in big, heavy trucks that also guzzle gas and get put into a gas station and then fuel up a car. Whereas in a charging station, you can just get electricity put into your car. But where does this electricity come from? It comes from your local power grid. About 61% of local power grids are still powered by non-renewable energy. So there's never a guarantee that your EV will actually be running on clean fuel. But we also have to consider which one is more energy con efficient compared to the amount of CO2 it emits. A ICE is actually far less uh, efficient in terms of energy compared to amount of CO2 release to a big factory producing energy which powers the power grid. So another point for EVs. Let's talk about economics now. After all, it is what makes the world go round. So for an average electric car, it costs around $45,000 to purchase one, compared to the $35,000 to purchase an ICE. So a clear point for ICEs. What about the cost to fuel slash charge? To charge an EV, it costs between $13 to $18 to fully charge, compared to the $100 to fully fuel an ICE. So another clear point for EVs. What about the fact that EVs have such a small range, actually pretty much half of an average ICE, wouldn't that then mean you have to fuel more and it would cost more? That's why I did the math, and it's 11.7 uh, miles per dollar for an EV compared to the four miles per dollar for ICE. Therefore, still a point for EVs. So let's also think about infrastructure. Everywhere you go, you'll find a gas station. You will never run out, have the problem of running out of fuel, as long as you don't do it on purpose. You have to, after all, fuel your car every now and again. And in cities, 
highways, wherever you go, you'll be able to find that. Charging stations, not so much, at least not in its current state. EVs have a problem that a lot of charging stations aren't being implemented yet, especially since a lot of them are also privately owned by Tesla and not being able to use by the normal EVs. Um, and then also, if we want to fully implement EVs, we need to change all the gas stations to charging stations. And that costs actually between $50,000 to $250,000. And if we want to get this change done quick, it will cost huge amounts of money for governments to implement this change, which some governments may not even have. So, a point for ICEs. So I want to go into a story before I talk about the social factors. I was once driving with my parents, towards to my, my grandparents, during Christmas. We were about 30 minutes away from our destination. We'd already driven three and a half hours-ish, and all of a sudden, the cars all stop. We think, it's a light traffic jam, we'll probably be waiting max 30 minutes, and we'll be back on our way. We ended up waiting about two hours at a standstill, because a Tesla, at the very start, front of the jam, had run out of charge and blocked the entire highway. Of course, this may seem minuscule, but it is one of the factors that leads to 60% of Americans worldwide actually preferring ICs to EVs. Not only is the limited range a contributor to that fact, it's also the charge times. EVs take between 30 minutes to charge, whereas if you want to refuel a car, it can take max five minutes. So, a point for ICEs. Let's also talk about another important social factor, health. After all, we all want to be healthy. So, obviously, we established before, EVs do not release CO2 compared to ICEs, which do release CO2. CO2 is known to be a harmful uh, in chemical that actually goes into our respiratory system and damages our lungs. This leads, among other facts, with respiratory illness to a lot of deaths and sicknesses throughout the year. So, of course, we have to forward a point to EVs. Let's talk also about development. ICs have had years on the mass market to develop and to become as good as they can get. Compared to EVs who have only been in the Mars mar market for a limited time, leading to them having so much more potential and being able to grow much, power, more, much better than ICEs. But we also have to consider the fact development doesn't always go as planned. We were expecting to have flying cars by now, but as far as I'm concerned, my car isn't flying. And we were also expecting computers to not be as powerful as they are now, but the phone in my pocket is as powerful as the computer that launched the rock, uh, rocket to the moon. So, even though it may be uncertain, I'll still award a point to EVs for the potential they have. So, you may be wondering now, Right? We're tied at 5.5, five. why don't you get a hybrid? Best of both worlds, right? And I go down on my knees and beg you, please do not buy a hybrid. They're actually the, uh, actually the worst of both worlds, considering that their lithium-ion battery in the hybrid is actually produces more CO2 than in a normal EV. And since it's also that much smaller than a normal EV, it takes much longer to off-put the carbon emissions from a uh, gas car, and by then, your hybrid uh, lithium-ion battery is probably at a point where you can't really use it. So, let's go back to the question I asked at the start. Is the stigma against ICs warranted? Well, I talked about the media at the start, and we need to talk about that when we think about this question. This huge industry that's been involved in probably everyone in this room's lives in a major fact way is so convoluted by the media and by huge stakeholders who are in it. So, all of you probably, before you watch this show, uh, uh, presentation, thought EVs are obviously the solution. But we just looked at it through facts and analysis that was tied at 5.5. Five. And that leads me to ask, should we be listening to the media blindly? Of course not. The media is constantly telling us what to do and what we need to believe. And as we see, sometimes it's actually not true what it's saying. But I don't, I'm not trying to say in this TED talk that ICEs are the solution, because they're obviously not. ICEs have so, uh, EVs have so much potential and can be ICEs in 9-0 in the future, 10-0 uh, in the future. So, but who wants to drive these over these? <laughs> but in all seriousness, EVs are the future, most likely. They have so much potential and they have so much time to grow. And as much as it hurts me, as I do love my ICEs, I have to, do, have to give them a crown. And if you do really care about the environment, just take a bus, train, or tram. Thank you. Thank you.